today, we are so lucky to have two of the most talented people in public service here on Jefferson's campus to talk about what everybody is talking about, which is Amazon and, and trying to land Amazon. Uh, what, what, these, what Harold Epps and Matt Cabre have done already is to put this city in position to be recognized for the opportunities that we can deliver uniquely compared to all other cities. So, um, I, you know, if you'll note from the title, uh, Navigating Amazon, Bushwhacking Through the War Room, these are the guys that put the war room together and figured out the best way to convey the value of the city and to deliver the prospects of uh, opportunity in such a way that it, that it, it tells an important, compelling story. The narrative of the city is second to none, and these guys not only tell the story, but they believe it, and it matters. It matters that you believe. So I'm, we're gonna, we have a little video to show you about our guests before they, before they take the podium. And, uh, and let's, you'll hear, let, let's just hear in their own words what they think about what's happened so far. My name is Harold T. Epps. And my name is Matt Capri. My title is Director of Commerce for the City of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I lead an organization called Select Greater Philadelphia. We're part of our Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia, focused on business attraction, bringing new businesses and new jobs to our 11-county region of, uh, of Greater Philadelphia. Well, uh, Matt and I, along with many other people, uh, including PIDC, led the effort to make the case to Amazon that Philadelphia was the place that they should locate their second headquarters. It's all about storytelling. How do we communicate the assets that we have from a business perspective, but also from a quality of life perspective, that would really outline for Amazon and their leadership team why this community in Philadelphia is the perfect fit for their growth? Our talent pipeline, our location and our affordability and our mobility were, were four of the critical factors. There are many others. We believe that there is no better place for Amazon to locate than Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Companies need the next generation talent. That includes Amazon, and so that's something else that differentiates Philadelphia as we lead the nation in, in the percent of its population comprised of the millennial segment. The fact that Jefferson has the vision to put together a series such as this, the innovation series, is really testament to how they engage with the community and the business and civic leaders that they work with every day. And we're just thrilled to be able to be part of it, not just to tell the story of the Amazon process and why we think it's such a good fit for Greater Philadelphia, but to be part of the Jefferson story as well. Please join me in welcoming two of Philadelphia's best assets, Harold Epps, Matt Cabre. So, uh, good afternoon. In, in, in my case, I can say good afternoon, neighbor, because I live uh, one block away from here, so it's good to be home. Um, so, I'm going to start, and Matt's going to try. Where, where, where did Matt go? <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, are we showing the video first? You can if you want. The, the Philly delivery? Yeah. Delivery? Yes. Well, I, wh why are you tee it up? Let me just say this. So what was it, Matt? September 7th? Yes. About 8.30 in the morning. Uh, so six months now, our lives have been turned upside down in a good way. So September 7th at about 8.30, uh, to use uh, next generational language, uh, our phones blew up. Uh, I mean, literally, uh, from that point on, there has been no day, not one day in my life or Matt's or many others, that the word Amazon has not been spoken at least a dozen times. So uh, let's go to the end and come back. We put a lot of work. Matt and I just happen to be the people in front of you today. There are eight to ten other people that are part of our road show, uh, and we'll get to who those people are, but let's just stop for a minute and show the end game of our first phase of the effort 
that we think had a long way to get us on the short list. And uh, how many of you are born Philadelphians? Okay, so about 25% of the room. One of the things that we learned through this that uh, Philadelphia needed, its spirits lifted a lot, and we think this had something to do with it. But there was something also that occurred the first Sunday in February. Yeah. All right, fly, eagles, fly, right? That had uh, uh, a lot to do, and so this city is in a very different place than it was six months ago. The eagles have a lot to do with it, but we also think making the short list of Amazon was a uh, con contributor. And my headline, if I were to leave right now, it's we're in it to win it. Hit the video. Been a more There's exciting never, time in Philadelphia. A more right. exciting time in Philadelphia than right now. Philly is a city. Is a city that's got an X factor right now that very few cities can claim. We've got momentum. This city is exploding. And right now, if you look in the sky, you see cranes. There's everywhere. stuff being built <laughs> everywhere. There's lots of energy in this city. We're poised to go to the next level. It kind of checks all the boxes. Great arts, great entertainment, four sports teams. 10x the amount of green park spaces, central parks. Our culinary scene is one of the best on a national stage. We just won three James Beard Awards last year. Our new American cooking is on par with every other restaurant in this country. I can absolutely say that without bias. It's a very real place. We're just about actually driving the ball forward. They're going to be tough on you, but that's, they, that's just because they love you and they, they want you to be better. But it just feels like home, man. I can call this place home for me. Our value add is our diversity. Like, we are a minority majority city. It's easy to be accidentally diverse in Philly, whereas all these other cities are trying so hard to get people to come in that don't look like them. And it's like, well, here it's easy. You got the kids out at Wharton and at the university level. I'm from Northeast Philadelphia. I'm from Northeast China. You got high school kids hustling that are in the city, learning how to code. So basically, I'm the one with the most information at the moment. Not to brag. And they're all within walking distance. You're finding students that are willing to challenge conventional thinking, to sort of question the way that things have always been done. And as a venture fund, we find that really attractive. When you bring the smartest people together with the best possible resources, you get new ideas, you get discovery, you get day one innovation. That's the kind of approach that has made Amazon great. And that's what I feel across Philadelphia. We are at the tipping point of becoming uh, a major player across the world as an innovation entrepreneurship hub. The reason why we have a kind of a creative design lab in the hospital is that when we get inspired by our patients, we could take that idea and inspiration and come down here and be able to test something out very quickly. And so we really kind of shrink that innovation cycle. Sometimes I have no idea what's going on down there. It's like one of those science fiction labs with things bubbling up. Honestly, I believe that the transformation of healthcare will start in that 150 year old vault at 925 Chester. I mean, this is a city that invented modern democracy, and we didn't stop there. This is an incubator city. This is a city that's, that's almost like fertile soil. You put the seeds here, it will grow. That's why we subscribe to this theory of the rainforest for talent development, feasting on biodiversity. That matches, I think, probably the biggest rainforest, which is uh, Amazon, right? Does sound a little bit like a car salesman? Does no. sound a little bit like a car salesman? And if you order by midnight And if you order by midnight f***ing tonight. That was in the video. So uh, I'm going to share with you kind of like the process, and then Matt's going to chime in if I miss something, and then he's going to talk about the uh, 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 assets of the region. So are we ready? So let me just start by saying that uh, you know every situation of this magnitude has to have a set of people that kind of guide it and lead it. And John Grady from uh, the Philadelphia Industrial Development Corporation and myself were the co-chairs. We were backed up by two of our senior uh, execs, one of them who just walked in the room, uh, my chief of staff. Well, well, you, you got a new title. What is it, first deputy? Sylvia Gallier Howard and Ann Nevins from PIDC. Uh, really were the midnight oil burners. And then we had Matt Cabry and a whole bunch of other people from the city government, the mayor's office, the Chamber of Commerce, PHL CVB, Visit Philly, Campus Philly. So if we were to stop right now and leave the 
message I would ask you to take from this is collaboration. We reaffirm and we learn through this that collaboration can get you phenomenal results. And we think we've collaborated in a very significant way. Let me just stop down and just make sure that we honor time. What time, how long do we have? Because we can talk about this to tomorrow, by the way. But we Not a problem. Q&A, Q &A. okay, got it. Okay, let's keep rolling. So great team, diversified across public-private partnership universities. You, you saw the video, and something was said uh, not too long ago, I would want to remember, have you remember, and it's true in this room. We were intentionally diverse. We wanted to show the diversity of the city in every dimension, and we orchestrated our teams around that, and it was, not, it was pretty easy to do, quite frankly. Okay, so uh, don't, don't, don't go too fast. So uh, th these were our subcontractors. Uh, I won't go, you can read just like I, but, but that, that too is all local and diverse. Men, women, let, you know, the, the ethnic diversity, sexual diversity, all comprised within our subcontractors. And they are the people that really delivered all of our uh, multimedia initiatives. Okay, keep going. Uh, we talked about this already, keep going. By the way. All right, so okay, it does work. Okay, so September seventh, eight thirty in the morning, uh, out on the newswire and across our uh, you know PDAs and so forth, came this RFP. Turns out it was a surprise. They kept a well kept secret. Nobody knew it was coming, and the entire universe saw it simultaneously. What does it say? It basically says that Amazon wants to open a second headquarters. Eight million square feet. That would be equal to about 33 buildings in Seattle. We, we, Sylvie, Matt, and I, among others, visited Seattle in uh, late September, early October to kind of get a uh, lay of the land. I think it was uh, late September. Six Comcast Towers. Yes, that, that's the equivalent, six Com Comcast Towers. Uh, and this rollout would be over a decade, decade and a half. Now, for you Philadelphians, born and raised, you would know at some point in the last 50-year history of Philadelphia, Philadelphia had two million people. And so one of our arguments to, to uh, uh, Amazon is, we, like no other city, can accommodate you because at this point we've got about 1.6 million. So if you add another 200,000 people to this city, we're still or 10% short of our historical capacity. Okay, so that's one of the arguments we made. But at any rate, trust me, this is huge. None of us know of any uh, potential location, relocation of job creator of this magnitude uh, by one company in the history of the world. Okay. Um, their core job demand and projection is 50,000 jobs over that decade, decade and a half, and the average salary is about $100,000. Now, these are high-end jobs. These are not warehouse jobs. These are not logistics jobs. These are programmers and coders and other data analytic, analytic type jobs. Just to give you perspective, when we were there back in September, we were told by third-party people that at any given point, Amazon had I want you to hear this, seven to 9,000 job openings. Seven to 9,000. It's hard to imagine, but that's what, that, and that's the key driver of their planned second location, and Matt will talk more about it, and that is one of the key assets that we argue, and, and institutions like Jefferson are at the core of that, okay? Five billion dollars in capital expenditures, and the investment that they've made in Seattle over the last decade and a half is almost $48 billion. Now, we get paid by you to help create, help with the ecosystem of job creation in this region. Who would not want to go after that? We have a few people that think it's a bad idea. Okay, so that just proves to me that you cannot ever get 100% alignment about almost anything. But until somebody tells us no, we are up every day trying to figure out how to have Amazon choose Philadelphia. All right, uh, again, the RFP called for 
we were surprised by this, that it only called for a metro region, metro region of a million people. We were surprised that it was not higher than that. By the way, Philadelphia has 6.4, something like that. What's, what's our MSA? 6.3. 6.3? Okay. So, and by the way, Seattle is 3.7. So we were surprised that they would even identify an MSA smaller than Seattle, given that they had nine, uh, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 uh, job openings. But anyway, that's what it called for. By the way, you can do your homework. You can go look at the 20 cities that got down selected, and you'll see that they were at the higher end of MSAs, and very few, if any, were down in the million person range. But, but anyway, they, by the way, uh, they got 238 responses. And your city is now one of the final 20. That's a statement in the right direction already. Top talent, we talked about it, you'll hear more about it. Mass Transit, many of you are uh, travelers. We have one of the top five mass transit systems in the nation. Some say one, some say two, but anyway, for sure, we're in the top five. And that is a major selling feature. Uh, and close proximity to international airport, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, by car, bus, rail, so forth and so on, okay? All right, moving right along here. State of the business friendly environment, you can read. These are some of the other uh, aspects of the RFP, okay? But again, when you start checking those, we score solid to outstanding, we believe, in every category. Yeah, do we have a couple of things we need to work on, like any other city? But we think, again, when you add them all up, our response said, what, Sylvie? We were the Goldilocks response, right? Not too hot, not too cold. Uh, let's see. So uh, we talked about collaboration uh, from every dimension, from the education system, from city council, from our city and state governmental leaders, uh, a ground well support. And believe me, we had to manage, stay in focus with making sure we provided an opportunity for people to be involved, but not make it bur burdensome for us. As we had, a, we had a timetable. Six weeks, uh, September 7th was the day we found out. And I th what was it, Sylvie? October 13th, 18th, 19th. And of course, uh, we think we knocked it out of the park. Uh, all of these are just other examples of what we did to prepare ourselves and the inclusive pr process that we had. And of course, uh, when we went, went to Seattle, uh, Amazon would not meet with us because they couldn't, they couldn't, because uh, they met with one city, they got to meet with all. But we spent a day and a half really doing uh, due diligence, and we learned a lot, which helped us, we think, deliver an outstanding response. Uh, so, uh, just to give you a frame of our written response, uh, it was 110 pages of confidential data. Uh, it covered five, six sections. You can read those at the third one down the home page. And the critical dimensions that we sold, and we will continue to sell. And by the way, we have already de Amazon this presentation, and we are using it for others. And we have had some companies already commit to move to Philadelphia as a result of the Amazon presentation. So if you think we're sitting around waiting on Amazon, you could not be more wrong. We are still having success. Let me get, get one little uh, side plug in. In 2017, the job growth in Philadelphia was 4%. The national average was 25 That's the first time, like forever, Philadelphia's had two consecutive years of job, job growth higher than the national average, 2017, uh, 16 and 17. And I predict 2018 would also be a great year. One other plug to give you perspective on the great transformation that's occurring in the city. The last two years, the city's added 45,000 jobs. Uh, and in 2017 in, we ended with over 700,000 jobs in Philadelphia, the first time since 1980 that this city has had over 700,000 jobs. So what I always say is we're going in the right direction. We'd always like to go faster, but for surely the city is moving in the right direction. And all of us are playing a part in that. And again, we think all of that is why Amazon, when they did their work, said we need to go learn more about Philadelphia. So that being Doesn't said, we've already seen the video. Don't need to see that again. We are going to transition, and uh, uh, Matt's going to take the lead and talk about the assets which helped 
convince Amazon that they needed to come learn more. Matt Cabry? By the way, let me just say this. My job is Director of Commerce for the city. I have responsibility on behalf of the mayor of all things business. One of our key partnerships is with Select Philadelphia. Matt will describe what he does, but we work in great harmony on this and other things, and together we help drive this region's growth. Thank you. Thanks, Harold. That's great. So I'm privileged to be here today. Thanks to Donna and the team at Jefferson. Thanks to Harold uh, for the great partnership um, in this particular project. But frankly, Harold and I and Sylvie uh, and the greater team within the Commerce Department in the city, city of Philadelphia, we work together without exaggeration two, three, four times a day, <laughs> it feels like. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, connection. We're part of our Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia at Select Greater Philadelphia. Our focus is on business attraction. We want new companies and new talent, new jobs to come to the 11 county neighborhood, is how I refer to it, of Greater Philadelphia. And that includes Northern Delaware, Southeastern Pennsylvania, and Southern New Jersey. Without a doubt, the heartbeat, the core of our community is the city of Philadelphia. And, uh, and that really makes up the, um, the, the great uh, foundation for our story when it relates to the Amazon opportunity. So, you can see the key takeaways here. We really do have a compelling story. We are stronger as a region than we are as any one county. And when we combine those assets together, it's a, it's a tremendously powerful story. Um, and we can leverage these uh, assets for, for our, our, um, uh, our public information here and in our, in our, our business attraction. Oh, thanks. Yeah, let's see. Or that one. <laughs> yeah. Let me just say that he talked about the region, and, and sometimes we have to reconcile what is best for the region, the, the, the suburbs, New Jersey, or, or the city. And Amazon made it easy. Of course, everybody clamored for their location to be the one that was took the lead in this, uh, in this uh, response. But they made it easy by being clear about what they wanted. And when we looked at the 20 different options we had, they led us to two, which Matt will talk about, because of their spec. Had nothing to do with us. They had to do with what they called for. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and one of the things that Harold touched on uh, that came about as part of the process of collecting information and data, which by the way, we have a lot of this, but we really fine tuned it and we really came together as a community across not only the city, but across the region as well. And there's some quotes in this presentation that you'll see from real people, from real Philadelphians that came to us through our process. And I'm not going to read each of these and some of them uh, are inspiring. Some of them are things that we all breathe and live every day. And some, frankly, people will say, yeah, that's great, but we're so much more than that. Um, things like Philly has great. Yeah, people, people will appreciate that, but at the same time, we have some polish and some finesse as well, so it's that blending. Um, our tech ecosystem is huge, and, and this is feedback we're getting directly from people in this community who are working in the tech ecosystem. Um, and this is really where I wanted to get to the case for Greater Philadelphia. So we, we go through the process of how we submitted the proposal to uh, Amazon, right? Um, but why is this such a great place? What story did we actually tell? And I do want folks to appreciate, we mentioned we're stronger as a region. It's an 11 county neighborhood. We all live probably in one of these counties. I would suspect that most of us live in one of these counties um, because we do cover such a great, what I would call big neighborhood of greater Philadelphia. And, uh, and this is typically how we position ourselves. And by the way, we at Select Greater Philadelphia, Commerce Department, uh, our main audience, national and international partners. Uh, and there's actually one today that I'm just going to pick on. He doesn't even know I'm going to do this, but Bruno Fortier is with us today. Um, Bruno is a proud Canadian, uh, and he is a uh, <laughs> Bruno. Yeah, that's right. Bruno is a site selector and a consultant to those who are expanding their businesses. So he calls us and he says, Matt, I have a company that's interested in learning more about Greater Philadelphia but he also was representing 
for that company other assets across the United States that best match that organization's needs. So he may be talking about other regions of the country as well, but we want him and his client to say, there's no better place than greater Philadelphia. Uh, and that's who Harold and Sylvie and, and Lauren Schwartz and I uh, are consistently speaking with at the national and international level to raise the awareness of greater Philadelphia in their hearts and in their minds. Um, and it's talent. We always start with talent. Um, and that's, frankly, all of you guys. Um, the Jefferson team especially is one of the bright spots in the story of talent that we often will tell. Um, it's the millennial growth. It's the tech talent. It's that pipeline of growth. We have just over 100 colleges and universities in the 11 county community of Greater Philadelphia. Those 11 uh, county colleges are churning out about 90,000 degrees every May uh, of new students who are coming into the pipeline. And the other aspect that I don't want us to forget, one of our favorite fun facts, is our stellar K through 12 educational offerings. Uh, in the Greater Philadelphia region, there are almost 1,100 public, private, and parochial schools that families can choose from to send their kids to those schools. Uh, and these are really great stellar choices uh, across the city of Philadelphia and the, the New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania suburbs as well. Um, and our STEM education is really burgeoning, not only here in the city, but ar around the region as well. And it's, uh, it's really setting the new standard for education in STEM. Uh, affordability and livability. The cost of living here, the cost of doing business here uh, is really second to none. And we need to appreciate that more uh, for all the challenges and uh, uh, hurdles that we like to suggest we have here from a business perspective. When you compare us to other parts of the country and other parts of the world, the story here is actually really special and, and really bright. And you combine that with the quality of life. And, uh, and, and again, it's a powerful, powerful story. These are just highlights and snapshots of what went into much more specific detail uh, in the response that we provided to the Amazon team back on October 19th. But frankly, it's part of our regular story that we tell all the time. Uh, next up is access and proximity. We often take this for granted, and I love to say that it's actually New York and DC that benefit from being so close to Philadelphia. Because we have folks who live here and want to be close to the FDA, for example, and they can be down in Rockville, Maryland in less than two hours, sometimes 75 minutes, depending on what path they're taking. They can be up to the uh, financial consultants and venture capitalists and have investor meetings up in New York in, in about an hour or so. Um, and that's a real asset because then they come home to this beautiful quality of life living here in the city of Philadelphia or in one of our surrounding suburban communities as well. And, and it's a really special positioning for us. And, and frankly, it's a little bit of luck that we just happen to be positioned in this part of the world and in this part of the country. Uh, it really provides a gateway into the US market. If there's a European com uh, company, um, a South American company, uh, a company from Africa or from um, Asia, uh, there's no better place than the Philadelphia gateway into the U.S. market. Uh, and there's great facts that we can share with you on this. One is there's three major ports within greater Philadelphia, uh, in Delaware, in New Jersey, and in Pennsylvania, the, the port of Philadelphia, welcoming ships from around the world with goods and services that are then being trucked or trained uh, across the country. So if you're distributing goods uh, into the U.S., uh, this is an excellent gateway. Uh, one of the fun facts in the materials on your, on your table, by the way, there's a quiz later. I don't, I don't even know if Donna mentioned that. There's workbooks on your, on your desk um, called At the Heart of Good Business. And I encourage all of us to take one of those with us and become intimate with it. Uh, I, I love to see them on your nightstands, dog-eared and, and well-read, uh, because it helps you become more familiar with your neighborhood and all the great assets we have here. And, um, one of the fun facts in there is that we can reach 40% of the U.S. population within uh, two hours. Uh, and that's a really amazing fun fact if you are distributing goods into the U.S. Uh, but it's also a gateway into Europe, frankly, and, and other markets. And that's one of the stories that we tell organizations like Amazon who are looking for an East Coast potentially presence. Uh, we think this is the best presence for them to establish so they can reach markets in Europe and, and Asia and other parts of the world as well. Um, there is really something special happening in greater Philadelphia. I think we all feel it. And, and I'm not just saying this because I'm in a lobby 
at 901 Walnut Street with the Jefferson team, but you guys are actually a big part of driving this specialness. Um, and I'm not being gratuitous to your leader, Dr. Clasco, but he clearly, I think you all appreciate, sees things through a different lens. He's willing to take some risks. He's willing to try something different. He's willing to fail. Uh, and that's inspiring. And he's also exceptionally willing to collaborate. And he wants to work with other folks. And you guys see it more than we do. We just tell your story uh, because it's a great one. And that spirit of collaboration, that spirit of innovation, while we're seeing it now in 2018, is actually part of our DNA. It's part of who we are in Greater Philadelphia. And, you know, we, we often go back to, and there's this balance of how much do we talk about the past and how much do we talk about today and tomorrow. <laughs> but the history that we have here, the founding of this country and democracy is really inspiring. And many of us may know that Philadelphia and the region is a city of firsts. Uh, and we tell that story and it's still happening today. You know, the firsts that are coming out of the medical community with the T-cell research and the gene therapy research and the HIV research coming out of Temple, these are all firsts that continue to pile into that bucket of firsts for uh, Philadelphia and our greater Philadelphia community. Um, and it's that really re renewed sense of optimism. So um, those of us who are native, you may feel this depending on your age, right? Um, historically, there has been a no can't, won't, shouldn't negativity that has held Philadelphia back. Um, and that's changing. And that spirit of optimism is really palatable. And we're seeing it and feeling it every day in what we do. And this um, submission to Amazon is, is really a, an example of how that has come together in a really tangible way. So we're seeing that more and more. And we need all of us to continue that momentum of, of optimism. Um, and how does that happen? Well, it happens with you guys. This is kind of my wrap up with uh, your active engagement uh, as an ambassador for Greater Philadelphia. So uh, I mentioned at the heart of good business, the publication uh, at, at each of our tables. And if you don't have enough, we can get you some more. It's also on our website, but it's chock full of information. And the next time you're at a conference or you're going to your cousin's wedding later this year in Texas, uh, or you're at a class reunion, uh, or you're at some other gathering outside of Greater Philadelphia or even inside Greater Philadelphia and someone says, hey, what's going on? And uh, we often go to what, right? Sports. We sometimes go to cheesesteaks. We sometimes go to Rocky and the Art Museum steps. Uh, we sometimes go to the Mummers or South Street, the Liberty Bell, all fabulous things about Greater Philadelphia. But we're so much more than that. And I would really encourage all of us to take one or two fun facts out of the heart of good business and incorporate it into your nomenclature. So the next time you're at your cousin's wedding in Texas and someone says, what's going on in Philadelphia? You can talk about something that goes beyond the standard or the, or the obvious. And I'll give you one or two. Down in Southwest Philadelphia, there's a facility called the PWPM, the Philadelphia Wholesale Produce Market. It's the largest contiguous refrigerated facility in North America. It's part of the Port of Philadelphia and all the agricultural products, fruits, vegetables, uh, wood, and other kinds of agricultural products that are coming off of our ports go through the PWPM for distribution, but they also go through for inspection. So the agricultural department, US team, uh, actually does training there because so many different products are coming off the ports in Delaware and Philadelphia and New Jersey and coming through the PWPM. How many people knew that the, this is rhetorical, you don't have to raise your hand, that the largest contiguous refrigerated facility in North America is right down here in Southwest Philadelphia across from the auto mall on Essington Avenue, right? Yeah. Um, when we're going down that way to the Philadelphia International Airport, we see uh, a, a very industrial uh, complex off of uh, 26th Street as you're getting onto the Platte Bridge. That today is known as Philadelphia Energy Solutions. It's the largest oil refining complex on the Eastern seaboard. It's right here in South Philadelphia. It's the eighth largest in the country, but it's the largest on the Eastern seaboard. It's a pretty impressive fun fact. And it has deep roots here. It goes back over a hundred years. It was part of Standard Oil and part of Sunoco be before it became Philadelphia Energy Solutions. So that's the type of information you'll find in at the heart of good business and on our website and, and other materials, regardless of where you get that information, we encourage you to become a champion and an ambassador for Greater Philadelphia. So the next time we have an Amazon project or Amazon-like project, 
we have even more champions and more ambassadors. And then we can all celebrate when we hear later this year that Amazon will hopefully potentially select us and announce that Philadelphia is the home for HQ2. So with that, I'll pause, take questions with Harold that any of you may have about the process, about fun facts in greater Philadelphia, and uh, we'll go from there. So first, can we please give a round of applause to this amazing <laughs> group of guys and gals who made it happen? Harold, you want to do? Yeah, so let me just say one thing before we get to Q&A, and that is one other area of advocacy. No matter what your segmentation is, I would imagine that you belong to a group, an association that has an annual meeting. And we would encourage you to, everybody to be an ambassador to bring those meetings, no matter what size, to Philadelphia. We have a very robust, robust hospitality and tourism bureau, but in addition to that, we're about to increase our hotel capacity by 2,000 rooms, probably four or five, six new hotels coming out of the ground. We've got to fill those rooms every day, and we could use your help in doing that. So associations, groups, meetings, fraternities, sororities, whatever it is you're involved in, bring those meetings to Philadelphia. With that, we open for Q&A. I see this gentleman right here. You have a question, a comment? It, it's more of a... Uh, statement I was planning to talk actually we'll be in a, two weeks on this topic here at Jefferson Department of Urology for interesting things uh, and um, you, you uh, there are some assets that I'm, I've been here 83 years and 65 of them at Jefferson uh, and there's some assets that you don't mention which I think are very valuable and they're frequently overlooked and I think Dr. Clasco is a leader in, in, in utilizing them such as North Philadelphia Airport when the uh, uh, when the Kuwait situation occurred and they were expecting tens of thousands of casualties against the, against the army that fell apart. Uh, but, but until that time, they were planning, and I was, that was my responsibility, C3s can land up there. I don't think industry has anything bigger than that. It would have to be reinforced. But so you can, yeah. and it's a very convenient travel-wise, whereas Philadelphia, uh, you know, International Airport isn't, isn't that convenient to everybody. Can I just interrupt you for a second? Yes. First of all, happy birthday. 83 uh, years, 65 at Jefferson. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, that's great. Uh, I know the uh, Philadelphia International Airport and the Northeast Airport is high on uh, Commerce Director X's radar screen, and it actually factors into our conversations about how do we position not only the Philadelphia International Airport, but the Northeast Airport? Well, not only is it is it on my radar screen, it reports to me. So, so j j j <laughs> sir, just be assured that in the logistics and transportation component of our presentation, both airports were very prominent. There's not a day that goes by I don't talk about the Northeast Airport. I take away from your message, though, that we could be more visible in our first level uh, assets about it, but we use it and leverage it when appropriate. Your feedback is elevated, and we'll do so. Thank you. And I would just add, if folks do have ideas for additional assets we can highlight, yeah. let us know. That's right, absolutely. We'll, we'll take input. Look, it takes all of us to help remind us of the great place this is. I moved here 10 years ago, and my first observation was, boy, this city is pretty bad and negative about itself. In fact, in my office, for those of you, Donna would know this, 40 years ago, the marketing campaign for Philadelphia is Philadelphia is not as bad as Philadelphia says it is. I'm not making that up. I have a t-shirt that reinforces it. Philadelphia is not as bad as Philadelphia says it is. We've come a long way since then. But every now and then, we still see a little tinge of negativity, and all of us can uh, work together to make sure that that is fully eliminated from, from our vocabulary. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, I just want to explain that I'm a Jeff grad. I spent 35 years in the uh, hinterlands at the Cleveland Clinic. We came back a year and a half ago to settle in Center City because of what you described. Mm -hmm. However, I also have firsthand experience with Seattle and San Francisco for that matter. The problem is with that is that what Amazon did to affordability, mm -hmm. it's no longer affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Seattle in particular. Uh, houses that you may see here in Philadelphia for 300,000 or a million dollars or more in the suburbs of Seattle. 
And that's just a caveat. That's something, again, I, I'm all for this. I think it's a wonderful thing, and I think Philadelphia would benefit greatly, but uh, you have to consider also that there is a potential downside. So two things, uh, one, one thing's for sure. What you just said is 100% correct. We had an analysis and a study done by third party professionals, uh, and it is a fact that real estate, if it's two things for sure, that we would have to manage, and what we say is we'd love to manage. Look out this window, one of them is transportation and, and traffic, and the other one is um, housing, both rents and home value. The data says, Wherever they go, that's going to be the case, and the data and the analytics say it would just be less here because of my opening comment. We have 20% underutilization against our historical capacity. So would it go up? The answer is yes. But we, we don't project, and, and our third-party professionals advise us, we wouldn't come nowhere near the New York, Boston, or D.C. rates. But, but would we see some escalation of the answers yet? You're not going to add 50,000. By the way, without an Amazon, but, but for perspective, we've added in two years the same number of jobs that Amazon proposes to bring over the next decade. We added 45,000 jobs to Philadelphia in the last two years. Amazon, now, tech has a multiplier of anywhere from three to five to one. But from the, from the housing perspective, we, the data projects that that housing distribution would be over 11, 13, 15 county region, just like it is in Seattle. So not everybody would choose to live in Seattle, but yes, it would go up. Matt and Harold, could you comment a little bit on the site selection phenomena? I know that there were a couple of sites that are being, uh, that are identified as key sites for consideration. Do you have any insights into that at this point? You mean in our proposal? In, in our proposal, yeah. yes. Yeah, so we collaborated on this and we had a very proactive, strategic response. We invited through Matt's leadership all 11 counties to declare were they going to submit their own bid or were they going to join forces with us in our bid. And we got some of both. Within the 100 mile radius, we probably had three, four different responses and other people chose to join with us. We then had a matrix checklist, 10, 12 different criteria, and everybody who submitted a uh, site, we checked it against their criteria. And from that, because they said urban, walkability, bicyclability, 20 minutes or less, or half hour less to the airport, blah, 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 emerged from that, were the two sites that we said to Amazon, we think among a half a dozen, which we showed them on a map, that these two sites, three, these two locations, three different sites, were the ones we thought best suited them. And they were the two sites on the Schuylkill River, UC2 and Schuylkill Yards, and then the other site was the Navy Yard. Remember, eight million square feet contiguous under the ownership of one owner. I lived in Boston. I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I used to run plants in Pittsburgh. Uh, there's not a city on that list of the 20 that I don't know reasonably well. Very few cities will be able to deliver the options within proximity that we delivered. Now, what we also said to them is, if you change your mind, we got another half dozen sites uh, that would meet your criteria. Matt? Harold's uh, perspective here. There are there are very um, there are very few sites around the country that can say they have land that is controlled by one developer, which in a process like site selection we can't take for granted. And just so folks are aware, in uh, the Navy Yard, it's being developed by PIDC, and the master developer is Liberty Property Trust. Schuylkill Yards is a Drexel initiative. Master developer is Brandywine Realty Trust. And in U City Square, which is kind of a new name that many of us may have heard of, um, that the University City Science Center has invested in, in and they've just selected a master developer known as Wexford Science and Technologies. Those are the three primary sites, but my point is they're all controlled 
by one master developer. So it's not like uh, a landlord or excuse me, a tenant would have to come in and negotiate with multiple different landlords the way they may have to in other regions. So it's a very unique and distinguishing characteristic about our Philadelphia sites. The other thing I just want to emphasize and compliment again Harold's perspective on this is when we look at the criteria of the RFP, there's about eight key things in there and you, you saw some of them up on the screen. Access to mass transit on site. Now if Amazon is really true to that piece of criteria, again there are very few places in the United States in North America that will allow access to mass transit on site the way Philadelphia can. And it's again one of those things we take for granted as Philadelphians. Our transportation system is exceptionally robust and if you haven't had the privilege of traveling to different parts of the world, you may not appreciate that as much uh, because the Atlanta uh, mass transit system by their own admission is lacking. And they, they, they are um, very envious, frankly, of cities like Philadelphia and Boston that have very robust mass transit opportunities. So that's a, another distinguishing characteristic that goes into the whole site specific opportunity. And, and some you know, fit that really well and others you know, fit it pretty well but need a little bit of massaging as well. So what we learned from our uh, trip to Seattle was our definition of man mass transit and others is very different. We think of mass transit as subways and light rail and so forth. We learned from Seattle that tr man mass transit is a bus stop. And so uh, again, it goes back to what do they want? And oh, by the way, for perspective, at 30th Street or the Schuylkill River, is the third busiest rail station in the nation. And our argument from there is that uh, four other places that are on their short list, or five other places, Newark, New York, and the three in DC, are all available from here in less than two hours at 25 to 40% of the cost. So out your front door, down the steps, and you can be in DC or New York in less than two hours. Well, <clears throat> Two, uh, two comments and uh, one little question. So first of all, um, a few weeks ago, exacting tap four weeks ago, there was a physician, Australian physician, who was a guest of Philadelphia, and Philadelphia City as well, and Remember? Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And we two, Matt, Matthew Cabri and Matthew Thackle sat together side by side. So it was a pleasure meeting you then, and welcome back to Jefferson. Thanks, Matt, good seeing you too. Thing. The second comment is, you suggested that we should bring the association, the groups that we work with to Philadelphia Convention Center. Yes. So in 2004, literally, I bought one group, about 5,000 people to meet here. That was in June earlier. And they're coming back again this year at the end of, end of June, about 5,000 Thank you. Thank you. The, and by the way, since 2004, this is a very different city. Yes. And the experience in the Convention Center would be very different after the successful negotiations of some of the labor unions. Right. But, but they love that. There were some issues. We took care of it. They're coming back again. So I just wanted to let you know. Well, we thank you very much. And again, that kind of a, a leadership and ambassadorship, we ask and encourage all of you to do. For perspective, that industry employs 71,000 people. The hospitality and tourism in industry supports 71,000 jobs in Philadelphia. So the okay. little question is in relation to what Dana asked, the site, do you know when Amazon is going to make a decision about their site selection? Yes, one, 2018 yeah. is all they've told us. And, and I'll, add, I'll, I'll add to that and just say, and this is not unique to the site selection process as well, for as public as Amazon was back on September 7th in issuing a press release with their RFP, now that they've made their long short list of 20 that we're very fortunate to be on, they're very much into a traditional site selection process, which typically is very quiet and confidential. And there's not a lot of public discussion around um, the details of any site selection process. Uh, and that's really the, the situation we're in now. So uh, two questions, if I may. One, did uh, the transportation uh, business and the shipping business that Amazon is in or would like to get in, much like pharmacy as well, 
did those factor into our discussions with HQ2, and did they show any interest in those industries? So we can answer the first part, and you have to uh, uh, kind of respect the process in, for the second part. So in our um, detail, we gave them tens of pages on each subject, and transportation was part of it, and we showed them all the assets, the airport, the port, and the support of the state with it, and yes, they have indicated that they might want to have further conversations at, at the appropriate time. Yes, yeah, so I asked the question particularly about the Navy Yard that way. Gotcha. So I'll, I'll add to that with a little bit of a fun fact that's related to logistics and shipping. Uh, the fun fact is Amazon's very first warehouse on the East Coast, state of Delaware. Paul McConnell, the McConnell companies actually built and today continues to lease to Amazon the very first warehouse they've had on the eastern seaboard is in the state of Delaware. Um, Gloucester County, New Jersey has several warehouses. Burlington County, New Jersey has several Amazon warehouses. I know Gloucester County, they employ about 4,500 people in Amazon warehousing and Burlington County is around 3,000. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, there's multiple uh, Amazon warehouses in the Commonwealth already. So our team in Harrisburg knows the Amazon folks reasonably well. Um, and I think the Commonwealth is the second largest location for Amazon warehousing uh, in the country. So logistics play into the conversation for sure. So absolutely. And this is a legacy manufacturing town. The new manufacturing in America is warehouse and logistics. Uh, raise your hand if you have bought something off the internet in this calendar year. <laughs> okay? And so the point is that has to be shipped, received, processed, distributed. Matt just described to you that we are still affirming and not having nowhere near ma magnified our logistical advantage by having access to 40% of the nation's population in less than a day by ground. And so we've got airport people, port people being hired and focused on increasing our position within that industry to take advantage of it. And oh, by the way, in the city, the Amazons and, and uh, uh, FedExes of the world are beginning, and, and UPSs, this whole notion of last mile, all right? You can get it to, the, to Allentown, but you still got to get it to 901 uh, uh, Walnut. And so those abandoned warehouses that we have in Philadelphia that you can see if you ride the train up and down either in either direction, we're bringing some of those assets back into utilization also. But yes, you'll continue to see announcements being made around um, logistical sites. One of our challenges within the city, this is why the region is so important, those warehouses require a million square feet. We don't have so many of those sites left in Philadelphia. This is just a reminder for our colleagues that are streaming in around the enterprise. If you have a question, we have a, a, a little bit of time left. You can tweet your question at Jefferson Jeff Innovation, Jeff Innovation. So tweet your question. We'll pick it up and pass it on to our, our special guest. And you have another second question. So thank you for the physical layer. Yeah. Now for the ether, getting into Amazon Web Services. Mm. Do we have an idea of, in the region, be it 11 County or otherwise, utilization of Amazon Web Services and its link to business and value? Uh, we have some of that, and you're probably not talking to the people that uh, are closest to it, but uh, I've been to a couple of the meetings that are beginning to tie that together, and we recognize, again, an additional opportunity. So it's not lost on us. And it will be, it, no, it already is, and will continue to be a double-digit pace of growth in perpetuity, probably, for a long time to come. So not to, protect, to perpetuate that Philadelphia negativity, mm -hmm. but how did you or do you have a plan to address some of the negative things that do exist in the city as well as in the other cities, I'm sure, are on the list 
like crime or something like that? So, uh, yes. We address them in the appropriate way, but when you do the stats, in, in spite of our direct rec recognition of it, statistically, we're just in the middle of the pack. Always is to get better. Make no bones about it. Uh, in fact, I have meetings on my schedule for next week around panhandling and crime and so forth. Okay, we and trash and others. We completely recognize it. But when Amazon, and we went to, by the way, we went against Seattle, uh, when you do the stats in any of those less than desirable attributes, we're middle of the pack. So we, what we respond is, we continue to address them, but when you say you want a big city, that's unfortunately, these are some of the ills that come with big cities. So New York is a lot dirtier than us, and Chicago's got more crime than we do, and blah, blah, and you know, and. Uh, now, opiates per capita, we do lead, the, we, we do lead may, maybe the Western Hemisphere in there, that, and we begin to work on that also. But yes, none of that is gone without our attention. And I would add to that, it's, uh, it's in addition, it's identifying the issue head on and not kind of skirting it, but it's also providing solutions. What are we doing to address the, the issue? Uh, some are working, some need to be enhanced. Uh, but it's, it's identifying the, the situation and, and communicating how we're, how we're addressing it and the solutions we're working towards. One quick example of uh, something that uh, in some of our other visits has begun, begun to get some positive recognition. We just opened the first week of February uh, down in the uh, bowels of MSB in an old police station, something called the Hub of Hope. And it's a one-stop shopping, not one-stop shopping, one-stop one uh, solution and resource provider for our most vulnerable citizens around simple things, bathroom, wash your clothes, health care, medical treatment, and, and uh, um, opiate addiction response. And if you want a job, we can help you with that also. And so that's another area that everybody can help with, with you know, any kind of donation that uh, you can afford. It's called the Hub of Hope. Uh, Sylvie, why don't you send to Donna uh, ways in which that bridge can be made, given that Jefferson, by the way, on behalf of the mayor and myself and others, we want to thank Jefferson for committing uh, to uh, take part of its headquarters to uh, the old Aramark building. That is a wonderful uh, uh, statement of commitment to the city and gives us another significant anchor on East Market Street. So if I could just add to that, Harold. Um, first, I want to thank you for uh, showing that great video. It's always wonderful for us to see Dr. Clasco and Dr. Bon Koo, who are driving so many innovative initiatives, be so centrally featured in one of the videos. For those of you who don't know, there were, what, four videos or three that were generated? Uh, five. Five? Actually, oh, OK. Yeah. So where, where can everybody see the other videos in case they want to? Yeah, so it's, uh, there's a public site called public.philadelphiadelivers.com. Matt will send it to you. OK, so uh, for those of you who were interested in, in the other videos, I mean, I, I know I've watched the, uh, I, love, I love Dr. Clasco's enthusiasm about the fact that the next generation of solutions are going to come out of that vault. And Bonku is leading the charge on that with a whole lot of really smart, talented people. But it would be fun, I think, for people to see that. And we will, look, we will get that from Sylvie, and we'll put it on the innovation web page. So for those of you who want to access that, we'll, we'll try to create an easier mechanism for you to see them. But I just want to end by thanking you so much. It was so insightful to, for all of us to hear you know, some of the inside stories about what you had to do to really put us in the running. I mean, this is such a big deal. It's a game changer for Philadelphia if, if, this, if this happens. And I love Harold's attitude. We're in it to win it. And so are we at Jefferson. We're in it to win it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Donna. Thank you.